that's so, or the reason that Judith is the way she is. But I, don't, I mean, I don't know. It is just it was just nothing really to me got answered and nothing was really told. Like, I don't really ne- I didn't really need to know how Michonne got and, and Daryl got their scar. Yeah, they made it seem like it was going to be very, you know, a, a climactic reveal when it was, you know, very dull. Right. Okay. So they dull. Okay. Well, here's here's another question because I I sat through this episode and 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 did I miss how Daryl got loose? No, no. He just did like he know, did a Houdini. He did a Houdini, and then he was like, "Let me help you, Michonne." Yeah. Yeah. So that so didn't make so any what sense. happened was the writers were sitting around going, "Okay, so how does Daryl get out of this? I think we wrote ourselves into a corner. I don't know. Let's just show that he's free." Yeah. Because that's exactly that's, what that's happened. That's all exactly of a sudden, what happened. all of a sudden, he's free and able to roam around. But I guess that's just Daryl. I don't know. But the thing that this episode did do was it did give us an insight as to why Michonne was very untrustworthy of anyone, you know, including strangers, um, even of their their own um, her own old group. Right. But to me, it's it still didn't tell me. Why Michonne and Daryl fell apart? Like Daryl leaves, and then we don't see him again. Where they, they he basically comes back six years later. Well, I think he leaves because he's continuing to look for Rick. He's continuing to look for um, evidence of you know, or his remains. I mean, after six you years, know, I would remain- think like, okay, Rick's gone. Rick's yeah, gone. I, mean. I know, I know, and I think it, I think for him, it was he took it. You know, the hardest of I mean, the group. I mean, six years. I mean, that's a car payment there. I mean, it's just. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I can, I can, I mean, that's. I mean, three years, and I'm ready to trade it in. I mean, you know, with Rick, you know, he really evolved. You know, as a person, you know, he became more. He was more of a um, a loner, and with Rick in the group, he became to work with. You know, as a team become part of a community um to think of others other than himself you know surviving and with rick gone i think that kind of you know he fell apart hmm i, I just don't i just don't understand like why he's gone i mean because to me this this whole episode never answered any of those questions for me as far as what is happening and how did this lead up to it i mean was this something that they were showing us because it's going to lead into something different next episode i mean that's the only explanation that i can think of is that if by showing this scenario and that's and that and, and even going into it when they showed you know i'll just refer to her as tara because that's the only name i know her under from <laughs> true blood when they showed tara it's you know i figured oh and immediately we looked at each other and I, and I thought oh that's the dreadlock girl from the whispers the whispers that's right what i thought too because they they haven't unmasked her right so i thought oh i mean the, i mean how do you not n- see the dreadlock dreadlocked girl you know i mean maybe that's her skin I, I, maybe that's who they're wearing is her skin i don't know it's maybe i mean i just think that's kind of I don't odd. Know, because if, if if in order for them to resurrect her it's gonna be pretty you know, pretty far fetched because I mean, she sliced her almost straight up. Michonne uh, sliced her straight up. I know, but she didn't cut off her head. But she also stabbed her in you know in the midsection. I know, but she didn't cut off her head. That's what I'm saying. She could have come back as a zombie, and that's how she ended up with her. How this one ended up with dreadlocks. Oh, I don't. I don't know. I think. I think. But what is that? But my point is that okay. So let's say that's the case. What does she have to do with the story? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe okay. So let's 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 just really dig into there and, and let's say when when they were running out and everybody was running out, Daryl was with a child. Mm-hmm. Okay, when Daryl came out, there was no child with him. Mm-hmm. So could that child be in the whispers? The one that ran off. Right. Possibly. And that's who is in the dreadlocks? Well, no, because it's a woman. 
Oh, uh, it is a woman. No, yeah. it's a woman. Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. That's just. It's a woman. I mean, and, and it leads back to what was the point of this whole episode? I mean, well, the thing what that, were they trying to tell us? Well, the thing that also got me thinking, too, was that with the children of the corn kids, you know, they w- knew how to um, gut a deer, skin a deer, take out the guts. They had the diagrams of that in their wall where they were um, bunkered down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But they were branding Michonne and Daryl. Were they planning on eating them? No, I don't know. Then why brand them? So they know not to eat them? I don't know. <laughs> well, why, would, why, was, why was branding so important to them? Exactly. I but I think that had a lot. I think I think that they. But if were, you're gonna eat them, don't brand them. They were introducing. Well, they were using. They were to them. It was like cattle. Oh wow! Well, they were I, like cattle. I, I, I didn't think of it like that, but I just never understood why they were branding them because it never led to that. But I actually thought you were going somewhere else with this, in showing those diagrams is now leading into those became the whispers, or they, in that's how they are able to gut and get the skin off of. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. I was I was leading into that too because in the whispers you do see in their campground where they are skinning a deer exactly the way the kids had the diagram. Yeah, because you know with with Walking Dead is as 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 crazy as some of the things that happen that don't make any sense. They somehow always lead into something they else. They always loop around some way or another, even though it's non you know um, eventful. You know, it's it, it still loops around just like uh, the scars, which I thought they were. I mean, I'm sorry. They're not they're not scars. They're burn marks. I thought they were scars. I thought so, too. I was like, well, they did. I thought somebody that like, carved they you, did a you kidney should... kidney transplant. Are they going to steal their kidneys? <laughs> like, what are they going to eat? Are they going to try and eat their kidneys? That's what I actually thought. I was like, oh, that's what they're going to do. That's how she got the scar. They're going to take out her kidney and they're going to eat the kidney. <laughs> There's some kind of for kind iron. Of... They need iron in their body. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody has jaundice in there. <laughs> so yeah, that was kind of that was kind of weird. But, yeah. You know, so um yeah, so that whole that whole episode was, you know, kind of weird. I mean So at the end we're still left thinking, okay, so is Michonne gonna help them? You know, she never really she explains to Judith why she doesn't trust and why they they sh- they shouldn't go that extra uh for them because they need to protect themselves but still like she doesn't really necessarily say we can't or i'm not right and i like how the best parenting parenting advice came from negan <laughs> i mean come on that's your kid man and negan's like well you know you're obviously here because you lost your child it's like yeah like, why are you coming over here and yelling at me? I've been in a box. You're pissed off at me because you lost your kid? Basically, she was trying to use him as a punching bag, and he was like, uh, no, ma'am. Yeah. It's not happening. So that's, I mean, this is another reason why, as much as people hate Negan, you know, it's... He's a character you love to hate. I'll, I'll say this, because I've, 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 I've believed it since the very beginning, even, even well, after he killed, um, what's his name? Kenny, uh, what's his name? The Chinese guy. Oh, um, uh, Glenn. Glenn. I don't know why I, was, I was killed Kenny. You threw me off with Kenny. Yeah, I was thinking <laughs> of South Park. So, um, <laughs> so you know, after after he killed Glenn, you know, it's like God, he's the most hated person in the world, right? But then when you start to kind of get to know him in a sick sort of way, some of the things that he was doing make sense. And yeah. I, and I and I kind of said in my mind I kind of thought I kind of get it I kind of get where he's going he's with this. He's a sociopath. He he's, is a sociopath. He's going about it the wrong way. He has the right intentions, just on some other level. Which, you know, again, you know, when it comes to the, to where they're at, it's this is not a normal society. There's not judges and police officers and somebody to keep the peace. So how do you keep the peace by being you know, stronger than the other person. You got to be an alpha dog. And that's the only way that you can make sense of everything. So I've always thought that he made sense. And so he is a smart guy. It's, he's not dumb. So, and I think that's why 
Michonne has him locked up still because he's a reminder of what can happen and what has happened. Right. So that way she doesn't forget. That's her way of remembering Rick. That's her way of remembering Carl. You know. Yeah, and she just always goes back to what did she tell? She tells her. She tells uh, uh, Negan. You know, well, did you tell him what you did to Glenn? Yeah. And, and he's, he's like, like, Yeah, I don't lie to yeah. her. Of course, I told her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm Negan. What did you think I was going to tell her? Yeah, he wasn't going to sugarcoat anything for her. Yeah. I mean, she's a child, but yeah, in his mind, you know, she deserves to know the truth. Yeah, so uh, I just I I think it's funny, but you know, I'm I'm actually looking forward to to where Negan's going to go with his character as far as, you know, how how big of a role he's going to play when it comes to everything that's happening. And so, you know, I read earlier in the week after the episode. Uh, yeah, I think it was yesterday. In the comics, how it how it yeah how plays the comic how the comics play out. You know, in the comic, Negan and Alpha actually form a romantic relationship, and Negan ends up killing Alpha. Right, right. So so now we haven't read the comics. We just read little tidbits here and there. So if this app happens to take place in the real walking dead show i'm sorry that we spoiled anything well we, i'm not trying to spoil anything but okay so le, the only thing i can do is i can because obviously we're the just sh- guessing we're guessing it because if this is the comics haven't always been straight through played out in the show no but there is a little bit of hints from the comics that lead into the show and so this is where i was going with this you know because i was interested in how negan's going to kind of play knowing how smart he is and how conniving he is i can kind of see that kind of happening with him and alpha getting together yeah but do you think that maybe he would do it just to prove himself to michonne and the group that you know he he has changed you know he is rehabilitated or do you think he may just go back to his old ways and try to be the leader of the whispers now no 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 i actually think in my mind i actually think what's going to happen is Negan, so, okay, so Be- they're, they're going to kill Beta. I think somehow, some way, Beta's going to die eventually in, in either this this season or next. And Negan is going to escape, get out some way. He's just going to he's going to leave because he, he's like, oh, I, I can figure a way that I can help this 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 area. But they're not going to play it that way. They're going to play it more to the fact that Negan's escaping because he sees another way to kind of take control now. Because we saw earlier in the season how he went out and there was really nothing there for him. And so now I think that it's going to kind of be portrayed as, oh, Negan found another team that he can right, join he with. he has to have a purpose. He has to be, you know, calling the shots. He has to call the shots, right? right? And I think that's how it's going to lead up is that you're going to think like, oh, my God, Negan's, you know, Negan's out and he's going to all of a sudden he's going to get back to his old ways. And he's going to, you know, now that Rick's not around, who's going to stop him? Who's going to be able to stop him because Michonne's not? Um, what's her name? Can't find her. Maggie, Maggie. Can't find Maggie. I mean, who's who's to stop Negan at this point? Yeah. I mean, you have Daryl, and Daryl is not going to stop Negan. I mean, so this is going to be how it plays out. Is that? I think. I think he's going to. I mean, in my, what I would like is for him to, you know have a change of heart and and try to belong now but i mean but that's just I that's don't know. that's yeah that's that's you just, um i was, of, i was watching sh- happy ending sugar and unicorns uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> but no i mean i actually think that's what's going to happen is that we're going to be led to believe that this is a bad situation and he will end up becoming um getting his way into the whispers and and possibly leading his way to, into, uh, I don't want to say a romantic relationship, but making Alpha fall for him and thinking that he can lead them and be her her beta and then ends up killing her and becoming the leader yeah. of the whole community. Mm-hmm. You know, not not the Whisper community. I mean, actually, of uh, Hilltop and bringing Alexander together, bringing everybody together under Negan, but under his idea of what Carl had wanted to do. Yeah, because basically that's what he was telling Michonne. The end. Cut. Because <laughs> <laughs> where do you go from there? Once it's done, it's done. You're like, ah, okay, happy ending. Yeah. 
I mean, but that I mean that's what I would like to happen. But and then the Fear of the Walking Dead crew come walking out of the wrong uh, corner. Hey guys, uh, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> that Madison, oh, she yeah. gets my nerves. So so anyway, so hey, um, I'm not sure if anybody sees here, but we're actually drinking some Texas Cola from Southside Craft Soda. Um, if you haven't heard of it, it's uh, it's actually from the South Side of San Antonio. A uh, small company that uh, is right now, it's starting off, and it's actually picked up a lot of traction. The uh, the drink is made with uh, local honey, and uh, it's made with pure cane sugar. Yeah, it's honey-infused. Honey-infused. I mean, it's, I'm actually drinking right now, and as I'm drinking it, I keep thinking, mm, it was so good. <laughs> I mean, it's like... Uh, I, I mean, it's 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 really good. So anyway, so yeah, that's one of our sponsors for Notches and Popcorn, Southside Craft Soda. They're going to be out with us um, at this the Saturday. Uh, this Saturday at the tailgate event. Uh, hopefully, everybody can make it out to us. We're going to be there. Talking Hands is going to be there. Um, a lot of the crew, AF One Hundred One, is going to be there. Um, we're going to have um, we're going to have hamburgers and sausage provided to us by uh, Heart Brand. Oh yeah. Um, and it's a, actually it's it's wagyu um, beef. I mean, it's, what is wagyu beef for uh, those that don't know? Oh, uh, wagyu is one of the best, and most delicious, flavorful meats. It's actually marbled with lots and lots of natural fats. I mean, I, I don't know the techni- the, the, how it technically breaks down, but mm-hmm. all I know is that it is super delicious it's the and best super, cut of meat you'll ever have. It is the best <laughs> cut of meat. But anyway, we're gonna have some um, some some hamburgers and sausage provided from them. And then Southside Craft Soda is going to actually be out at the event um, providing samples. And, uh, and yeah, so join us out there. Uh, we're going to take a, a quick uh, five-minute break or two-minute break or one-minute break, whatever the producer allows us to have. And then we'll be back in just a minute to talk to you about Netflix's new show. Um, Black Summer. I keep wanting to say Bloody Summer. I don't know. Black Summer. Um. And by the way, um, I don't know if anybody knows this, but y'all can call in and ask us questions. Uh, in fact, I'd like for somebody to call in and test out our phone lines. Um, you can call us at 210-876-CHAT, um, and that's uh, 2428, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. 210-876-2428. But give us a call. I, if anybody has any questions or wants to talk about something, I'd love for anybody to call in. I'll tell you what. I'll give y'all, whoever calls in right now, I will pr- give you two, I'll give you a pair of San Antonio Commander tickets. What? Yeah, I'll give you a pair of San Antonio Commander kick- tickets. Um, now, the tickets are in the 107 section, which is right when the commanders come running out on the field, so we're close enough that you can feel the heat of the fire coming off of the field. So you're going to get the first person that calls in? Yeah, and that'll also give them access to the field after the game so they can go take pictures on the on the, on the the field. Okay. And there might be some players on and there. They, I can't they, say that they are or there aren't, but... Let's say they have to call while we're on they gotta, now? Yeah, they got to call now. There's, I mean, they can't... If, if, they got to call while we're live, so they can't call later on. They got to call and they got to talk to me. Maybe, wow. I should, maybe I should give them a trivia question. Should I make it more difficult? Sure. Why not? Okay. Uh, trivia question. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Dead who's, silence. Who's, who's my? Who's my? Who's my, who's my who, what? What character do I hate the most from Walking Dead? Oh, there's okay. There's a list there going on. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's see. Let's see who knows. But yeah, call in. Call in. Call in. Okay. Well, until then. We will start talking about the new Netflix series, Black Summer. No, no, wait. Before we talk about that, I want to talk about something that I've been watching. You have been asleep on. Oh, yes. Okay, so there's a, on the History Channel, I didn't know this, only because I have Hulu and I found out, there's a show called Project Blue Book. This is based on true top secret investigations of UFOs, uh, unidentified flying objects, and related par- uh, uh phenomenon conducted by the United States of America from 1952 to 1969. This this was done by Dr. J. Allen Hynek. Um, he's a brilliant, but yeah, he was unappreciated college professor, and he was recruited by the U.S. Air Force to spearhead a an operation called Project Blue Book. Okay, now who comes out in this show? I know, I know, um, I don't know... 
I don't know their their real life names, but if you know Littlefinger, Littlefinger from, is actually Doctor Hynek now um, from Game of Thrones, uh, which is a uh, Aiden Gillen. Okay, now he comes out in it, right? And if you watched Vampire Diaries, um, Enzo, Enzo from Vampire Diaries, Michael uh, Malarkey, yes. Malarkey, he comes out in it also, right? 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 And I don't know if there's anybody else because I was asleep. Right, right. Well, there's actually a couple of other well-known characters that are in this um, in this show. But, I mean, it is he's partnered with the Air Force Captain Michael Quinn, which is played by Michael Malarkey. And they summon him to investigate UF sightings around the country. And But they want him to use scientific or science to figure out what really happened. So have you ever heard where they say, like, oh... Um, there was a UFO sighting, and then all of a sudden the government comes back and says, oh, it was swamp gas. Yes. That's where this comes from. Okay? okay. This is this is where this comes from. I'm not going to try and ruin it from anybody because I really want you all to check this out. This is such a good show. When I first started watching it, it was something that I started watching just because I don't want to watch shows without Susan. It's just one of those things. It's like I don't want to start a new series without Susan. I know that you know. I, I kind of like to enjoy these 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 moments that we have watching shows together. But when I first watched this first episode, um, I couldn't stop watching it. And of course, like I said, it, this was at night. Susan's usually asleep. I'm just kind of in bed watching TV, and I'm I start watching the first episode, and I get sucked in because I'm like, I have to watch the second episode. So there I am, two hours <laughs> later, still watching and thinking, I can't watch a third. I've got to go to bed. So over the series of a couple of nights, I've actually been watching this, and I finally finished it out. But every day I'd wake up and go, oh, my God, it was so good. Last night, I was probably two episodes in, and I knew that the finale was coming, and I was like, oh, I stayed up till 1 o'clock in the morning watching um, Project Blue Book. So if you get a chance, if you have Hulu, watch Project Blue Book. If you don't have Hulu, it's on the History Channel, Project Blue Book. Check it out. Call in, send me a message, tell me what you think of it. I'd love to hear your thoughts, but um, that's all I have to say about that. That's That's such a great show. I'm sorry, I don't have much feedback on that because I have not watched it at all. But, um, but what's, I mean, what's really cool is they actually take, I mean, these are actual events that they take from. Like, they're taking real stories that happened, and they're, they're taking the information and putting it Portraying it into the series. Into the series, right? Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, my God, like, this was so good. I mean... And it was really funny because I don't know if anybody has seen this. If you have you seen it, love it. Okay, yeah. So our producer's like, yeah, he he, he loves it. Um, this show at the very God, I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but I will tell you this: in one of the episodes, you actually get to see. Um, it, you can Google this too, where the UFOs are spotted over the uh, the White House. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, if you Google, if you Google UFO White House, now it, when was that? Like, was that in the fifties? That was in the back in the fifties. If right. you Google that, it's in there. So wow. that's what's really cool about it is that they actually take stuff that was done back in the nineteen fifties when all of these um, alien sightings were happening and this, you know, paranor- paranoia about aliens attacking Earth, and they turn it into a series using that information and kind of take all that. I mean, it's I don't know. It's it, to me, it was really good. It's kind of like. I can't even. It's like X Files. It's like it's like real X Files. It's like 1950s X Files. Yes. Oh my God. It's so good. I, mean, I couldn't stop watching it. I mean, I, I'm at the point where I want to see it with you, and I'll watch it again just so I can be like, "Did you see that? Did you see that? Did you see that?" <laughs> looking, well, we, looking at your face. Did you see that? <laughs> well, I guess we could do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I won't look at your face. I'll just, I'll just play on the computer and 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 look at stuff. So, okay. So now we can actually go back into today. Uh, I shouldn't say today. Last night. Netflix dropped the trailer to Black Summer. Um, if you haven't seen the trailer, you can actually go over to uh, nachosandpopcorn.com. And uh, it's uh, I did a post on it and actually have the trailer right there. So y'all can, you can click on it and you can see the trailer for yourself. Or you can go to Facebook, uh, nachosandpopcorn.com. It's on there too. Oh, is it? Okay, yeah. Or you can go to Facebook and go to Nachos and Popcorn. So, yeah, several different places that you can log into. You can go to pubsportsradio.com, click on Nachos and Popcorn. Um, anyway, there's a whole bunch of places for it, but, um, you know, following, and this is one that we haven't seen, but the, following the success of Netflix's first Korean drama kingdom kingdom is something we've been meaning to watch. It's in our queue. It's Mm -hmm. in our queue to watch. And it's actually, it's, it's, it's zombie genre. 
it's basically um, samurai um, zombies. Yeah, it's yeah, it's what it is. It's you know, I, I mean, what's that Tom Cruise movie that he comes out of the the, the last samurai? The last it's, a, it's the last samurai meets uh, World War Z. Yeah. So we haven't seen it, so I can't we we can't really talk about it, but. Um, that's about zombies, and and that was a very successful um, Netflix show, and so now this was actually announced last year in 2018. Um, what is her name? Uh, uh, Jamie King. Jamie King. Jamie. Which I love her. If she also came out in Heart of Dixie, which she's just a character that you'd love to hate. But anyway, that was a girl, girl the, show. But girly show has nothing to do with zombies. <laughs> <Yeah>. But <laughs> so as you can see, Susan likes girly shows and zombies. <laughs> But a combination. A little combination. So uh, anyway, so this was announced last year, and it was titled Black Summer. Now, this this new show will act as a Z Nation prequel. Did you know that? I did not. Right. Okay. So in 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 Z Nation, they actually make reference to Black Summer. Now, for those of you who have not seen Z Nation, Z Nation is a sci-fi series about the apocalypse zombies right so it's kind of like it's kind of like a quirky version of walking dead oh yeah it has a, it's very comical yeah it's 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 like it's like a lo- far fetched i mean because i mean it's it's like the sharknado yes of zombies exactly but without exactly. the without the sharks mm-hmm. but um yeah so so z nation actually it it aired on on sci-fi for the last five seasons and it's been canceled and so this actually leads right into Black Summer, which is somewhat a prequel to Z Nation. Okay. But Z Nation being a kind of a hokey, like I said, like a Sharknado type of zombie, this is actually a little bit different. More, it's more of a drama. It's, it's more, more of a drama dra- based. It's more drama based, more action based. The only way I can kind of really describe it is it's like a, it's like. World War Z amped up in drama and suspense and Walking Dead on full octane. Wow. Wow. Well, I, I know. I, I mean, y'all can quote that. I mean, if anybody's out there, E, e- News, <laughs> Netflix, y'all want to quote that, y'all are more than welcome Nachos to. Nachos and Popcorn. Nachos and Popcorn think that Black Summer is full of octane. <laughs> Well, watching the trailer in itself is very, very exciting. It has, you know, all the zombie suspense, all the zombie, you know, um, thrill of, you know, where you're, you're just like at the edge of your seat, like run, 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 you know, don't let it get you. It's coming, it's coming. Right. You know, and what's really funny is that this show, as as much as I think they're going to show the 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 zombie part of it, from my understanding. It's gonna it's gonna take place in the way I think that Fear the Walking Dead should have should taken, have done yeah should have done. So from my understanding that it's 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 it it before the zombie apocalypse, there's zombies there, but they're not full. Bl- they're they're not all the way there yet. Okay. So it's 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 leading up to it now. It's um, so how they're they're slowly evolving to. Before they're dead, I don't know. I, I'm I'm just guessing. Right, right. It takes place about a year, a, a, like a year before the zombie apocalypse. So this is like this is like leading up to the zombie apocalypse. Like in Fear the Walking Dead, they started off with, oh, the zombies are here. Right. Like that's all there is. This is actually people are getting sick, dying, and then they're coming back. Like the very same episode. Like all of a sudden, it mm-hmm. was like, oh, there's a zombie, and all of a sudden, everybody's zombies, and now we're trying to run, and it was like right there and then. Right. This is actually leading up to the first outbreak before the shit hits the fan. Okay. So this is going to be what I think that Fear the Walking Dead should have done is is actually show it leading up to that. And this is what Blood Blood uh, Black Summer. I keep wanting to say Blood Black Summer um, is is supposed to take place. Yeah, I wish they would give us an insight as to why they're calling it Black Summer. Well, because their blood's black, is it? Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know either. I'm just <laughs> guessing. <laughs> they don't have. They don't have. When well, they, whenever they cut off their heads, it looks black. We'll let you know on April the uh, what's a week after the April 11th. We'll let you know. Yeah. So yeah, this show is going to come out. It's uh, it airs Thursday, April 11th. So um, just know that we'll see it Thursday 
We'll probably binge watch it over the week. It's Netflix, so we're going to binge watch it, we're right? Definitely. So we'll get to binge watch the whole thing. And so that Tuesday, we're going to come and talk about it. So if you haven't seen it by that time, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get. We're going to talk about it. So um, anyway, I'm still waiting for somebody to call in so we can give away some tickets. Has anybody called in, producer? Nobody wants tickets. What? Um, okay. I mean, someone's going to get some tickets. What the flick? No one's called. I mean, has anybody sent us a message? Are you on Are you on Facebook Live? Has anybody sent us a message and said they're trying to call in and they can't? Nope, nada. Well, I don't know. Okay, I guess we're gonna sorry, have to, guys. Just gonna have to hand them out to somebody else. Give them away some other time. Well, okay. So after, just to let you know, because we only have like what two more episodes of The Walking Dead. Correct. So we got two more episodes of Walking Dead, and then what comes after that? guys game of thrones game of thrones yeah yeah we're super hyped up to start watching that again so um we've already got our johnny black white walker in the freezer nice and chilled you got that we got our we got our our uh wine our our oh no that's walking dead wine yeah we're walking dead wine uh, we got walking dead wine in the refrigerator we probably need to break that open before the end of the season <laughs> it's just been sitting there so um, but yeah, so yeah, we got uh, Game of Thrones. So we'll be talking about that after um, it airs on Sundays. So on Tuesdays, we'll be talking about it. Um, so just to let you know, you know, um, watch it before then because we'll certainly be talking about it a lot. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be telling you and we're and we're going to be giving away spoilers. So if you haven't seen it. Um, yeah, I'm, I mean, right now is the perfect time to binge watch and, and get caught up if you have it. It is a great show. It's one of the greatest shows to have been aired within, I don't know, last couple of years. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's anything compared to it. No, no, there's nothing that's been compared to it. And, and the, the fact that it's going to go away it really sucks. Yes, definitely. But I'm still hoping that um, they did, they had set said that each episode was going to be two hours you think they're gonna have a spinoff um i think if they're smart they will i mean they have to i mean i mean because it's it it's created some great revenue for them so maybe why, have, maybe have a prequel Hmm. i mean lord of the rings did it maybe maybe they'll have the story of uh john snow's parents oh yeah they could they can be that can be uh they can have small miniseries Every season, mm-hmm. I mean, Star Wars does it. Star Wars has got a Star Wars, and then the following summer they got um, Disney ruined it, though. They got a Disney ruined, you know, episode. Well, yeah. they ruined. They only ruined Solo. No, they ruined it. They ruined it. No, I don't think so. I mean, I, I st- I'm still a big Star Wars fan. I am too. I am too, and I will continue to watch it every time they release a new movie or release any any new product out. You know, I'll. Look for it and buy it. But I think Disney's spinoff on Star Wars has kind of tainted it for me. Hmm. I don't know. I, it has, I mean, the only thing that I, I don't, the only thing I don't like is I don't like Solo and I don't like Jar Jar Binks. That's it. Well, Jar Jar Binks was prior to Disney, I think. Well, yeah. I mean, they should have never done that. But I mean, yeah. prior to Disney, they should have never done that. But yeah. So that's, that's, that's what we got going on. I mean, so. Um, Anything else that we're talking about? What movies are coming out this weekend? Well, um, I don't know. <laughs> but in case you've missed it, uh, Netflix has already aired the next season of Queer Eye, which we've started to watch as well. And, oh, my gosh, it is so wonderful. I love those guys. I mean, they just make me feel, I mean, they're just very uplifting. I love them. I love them. I really do. Yeah. Who else has seen Queer Eye? If if you're not, you should. I mean, Queer Eye is actually really, really good. Um, it's it, it used to be the originals were Queer Eye for the straight guy, so they would only re- redo or remake guys. But now it's just you know it's anybody. They're doing anybody. Oh and, yeah, no, I mean, well, no, I mean that was back in the that was back in the. They're not. They were. They weren't doing gay people in the first season, were they? No, but they were only doing guys. Not in, in the original Queer Eye for the straight guy. Oh, I never saw that one. It's the original Fab Five. Yeah, these aren't the originals. 
No, no, no. I didn't. I didn't. No, my, I, I remember that one, but I never saw that one, so I don't know enough about that okay. one. But I do know, like you know, of this this whole episodes that we've been watching lately. I mean, it is such it. It's forty five minutes of just these four flamboyant, and I shouldn't say flamboyant because they're not flamboyant. They're just like over the top gay guys, and they come into these people's homes. They were they were nominated to you know for whatever reason you know we got one guy who he lost his wife which that took susan to tears yes oh um, my gosh. you've got a you've got a black girl who she was adopted and you know she was adopted as a child grew up with her parents and then came out to her parents and they, they disowned, disowned her. her they disowned her they disowned her and then come to find out that her adoptive parents actually had another kid uh, not her adoptive no, parents no. i'm sorry her her biological... Her adoptive parents were actually in relation to her. They were like the cousins. Okay. The 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 original parents actually had a daughter, and they she didn't she thought it was her cousin, and then come to find out it was actually her sister. Mm -hmm. And so they were able to kind of get them back together, which she thought she had no family. Right. She basically felt like she was alone in this world. I mean, it kind of sucks if you really think about it. I mean, you're, you're black... I mean, I hate to say it this way, but you're black, so you're already you're already feeling like that there's the world is against you. You're a lesbian, which and makes adopted. you and adopted, and adopted, and so you're basically. I mean, I, I, I can't. Her self esteem was real low. I can't imagine anybody else's self esteem to be that low. Where then the, the parents that adopted you have raised you, and all of a sudden we're like, oh, because you're lesbian, and our religion doesn't approve of that. Get out. Yeah. So it made all these other um, challenges. Um, just made her made it much harder for her. But what happens in this in the episodes, just to let you guys know if you haven't seen it, is that one person gets nominated. Uh, it's usually like a fr family member or a friend nominates um, nominates someone, and what they do, the Fab Five go out and do is they remake them. You know, they uh, do a makeover and their clothing. They look at the way their their eating style is and they teach them how to you know do basic cooking um they remodel a lot of their home you know to give them you know some self-esteem and to you know feel more um to feel good about themselves yeah so they can feel good about their it their brings space. them back, it brings them back to life i mean a lot of times no matter who you are you know whether you're on queer or night and you get into these um I guess these ruts in life or you, you know, you have a bad situation, you lose your job, you lose a family member, you, whatever it is, you get into these ruts and sometimes you just don't know how to get it out, how to get out of that rut. And a lot of times your own family or your own friends don't really know how to help you get out of those situations because either they're just thinking like, oh, you'll come out on your own or you know, they'll tell you to cheer up and, and or get over it or whatever the situation is. But a lot of times, not only your own family will understand how to even help you to get out of that situation. And all of a sudden, these five guys who one is a chef, one's a, um, a you know, can teach how to dress, one's a psychologist, one's a, a hairstylist, and then one is an interior decorator. And so they basically come into this person's life and they 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 transform him. They transform his home. They transform his his, you know, from this, you know, like one guy's got a scruffy old beard. He just hasn't just doesn't want to shave. He's basically given up on himself. And, you know, they clean him up and make him look good. And then he looks in the mirror and he feels good about himself. And, you know, through, you know, learning that that he's not alone or she's not alone can really help somebody out. So. Um, and just in the news today, I don't know if you know this because I, I just found this out. The girl that we were just talking about, the 16 year old girl, um, was a uh, fans actually raised money to send her back to college. Really? Yep. 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 Um, oh, wow. um, it's uh, basically they raised money to send this, uh, disowned les um, lesbians, what they have written lesbian back to college. Um, and I'll tell you, I'll read it. I'll read it to you. Cause it says right here that she, um, when she was 23, she was kicked out of her home when she was 16 by her adoptive family when they discovered she was a lesbian. She later tried going to the University of Kansas to study computer science, and she had to drop out, drop out after occurring, uh, occurring too much student loan debt. 
And so um, fans raised money on her behalf and um, sent her back to school. Oh, wow. That is such... That's such a great story. Right. See, and it's it's these little stories that they, you know, have on Queer Eye that, you know, just, you know, they really bring people together to to want to help one another. And I think that's just, you know, very positive, especially with all these, you know, bad stories and other things that are happening here in the world today and you know right. just to know that this is positive this is something positive that's happening is awesome yeah so i mean it was a fan that created a gofundme campaign to help raise money to send her back to school and um the page that was original the original goal was uh, at a hundred thousand and uh, it was launched march 16th and so far they've raised seventeen thousand dollars wow that's awesome I, that's, I, I mean, mean, if we can raise money to 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 build a wall. Oh God, let's not even go there. I mean, I mean, let's just think about that. I mean, if we can go online and raise money to build a wall, can we raise a little bit more money to help this girl go back to school? I mean, let's let's put one person back to school. You never know; she might change the world. So, that money might be a a, a good investment. So, anyway, um, what else we got talking about? Um, we have seen. Uh what else have we seen? We did watch an episode of um, the, what is it called? The Disappearance of. Oh, yeah. The Disappearance of Madeline McCann. Yes. On Netflix. Boring. I liked it, quite honestly. I We saw the first episode and I liked it. Fernando didn't. It was kind of slow, but again, you know, they're talking about a, a, a disappearance case. A di- I, never, I can't talk today. I never understand. I never understand why people don't watch their kids. That, well, yeah. I mean, I mean, my kids so much as move an inch, and I'm like, what are you, where are you going? What are you doing? My dogs. My <laughs> dogs so much as leave the room. I'm like, hey, where are you going? What are y'all doing? Get over here. Sit down. Yeah, he actually does just like that. That's it. That's exactly my conversation with him. I mean, that's um, honestly, it's like they get up and they start walking. I'm like, where are y'all going? What are y'all doing? Y'all are not supposed to be over there. Get over here. Sit down. <laughs> and they and they come and they sit and they just look at me like. What? So basically, this show is about um, these parents go off on vacation to Portugal. That obviously can't take care of dogs. And they uh, decide that they're going to leave their kids in their room uh, in the evening as they go out for a couple of drinks with some of the other uh, vacationers. And what they do is um, once an hour, they take turns going in and checking on the kids. Well, what happens? She gets taken during that time. And, uh, yeah, that's about all that, we saw. <laughs> that's all we saw. It's like, oh, there, that's, that was newsworthy. <laughs> yeah, so at that point I was like, I can't watch this no more. It's just, it's just so irritating that parents – and I actually remember this story. I actually remember when this happened on the news, um, hearing about it and thinking, God, this sucks. You know, you go on vacation, you lose your child, or your child gets kidnapped, not lose them. Your child gets kidnapped – in a in a in a foreign city first of all they're from they're from England they're in Portugal on vacation their child gets kidnapped and there's really no i mean you don't have your own law system you know you don't have like the FBI the CIA or whatever the you know the the British government has to help find a child in a foreign country and your child's gone there's yeah. nothing you can do about it i mean there's there's really not much you can do to to fix your situation and then you you have to go back like you can't stay there yeah that's not your home you have that you're just visiting yeah and it's like i mean that sucks i mean i mean it really sucks because i mean i mean god forbid something should happen to to our you know four-legged babies you know at least i'm in my house i can go try and you know go around the neighborhood you know knock on doors check their chip i don't know so we'll figure out something but you know when if i'm in a foreign country and i lose my dog I guess my dog's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, I know I'm trying to compare dogs to kids, but that's a little, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, don't get mad, okay, guys. Our our dogs are like our our babies. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> sometimes sometimes my you know my dogs come before my kids. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> they, they behave better than my kids sometimes. Yeah. So. Um, that was interesting. You may want to take a look at that, see if that piques your interest. Uh, we also watched an episode of The Widow, which, again, I liked. 
and he didn't. So um, on my own time, I'll have to watch that. Yeah. And, and that, that one's also on um, Amazon that, Prime if you want to watch that. And, you know, I don't know. And, I and, and, and send us a message, um, you know, call in. Uh, so we didn't get any call-ins? No call-ins. Oh, somebody didn't get any tickets. Just think, if you would have just called the phone number, you would have got tickets to go and to the San Antonio Commanders game on March 23rd, have prime seats to see the Commanders yeah. come running into the field. Now, and y- y- you guys out there, did anyone try um, calling in? Did you have pr- problems? I mean, message here, message us here on uh, Facebook. Let us know. Let us know. Hey, I tried Is to call in. I didn't, yeah, I tried to call in. I couldn't get through. Let us know. Um, so anyway, so uh, I guess we're going to wrap up now. Uh, again, I want to give a shout out to one of our sponsors, Southside Craft Soda, uh, Tex- Texacola, which is, uh, and I'm going to, re- I'll just read it right off to you. Uh, was founded by Andrew Anguano and Greg Sp- Spickler uh, on the South Side of San Antonio. Um, there are craft soda finds its inspiration from the flavors of the South Texas by blending area ingredients to familiar recipes, recreating beverages that are uniquely our own. Southside Craft Soda is infused with Texa- Texacola. Um, it is honey infused. It is made with Mexican pure cane sugar, other natural flavors. The soda is delicious. I mean, I like Mexican Coke, and I can tell you that this is probably by far better than Mexican Coke. Um, you can pick this up. I know for a fact you can pick this up at the Smoke Shack Meat Market. Um, but if you go over to SouthsideCraftSoda.com, um, and you can follow them, you can follow them on Facebook, Instagram. Um, you can also go, if you go to the website, southsidecraftsoda.com, you can learn more where you can find this soda in the area. If you don't go and you just want to sample it, you don't want to buy a case or anything like that, you want to sample it, they're going to be joining us at the um, tailgate event on March 23rd, this Saturday, from 3 to 7. We're going to be in Lot C. Um, stop by. They're going to have their uh, their race car out there. They're going to have some sample sodas. And then we've also got our other um, our other sponsor, Heart Brand Beef. Uh, they'll be providing us some um, Wagyu hamburgers and sausage. And uh, we're going to have some some tasty eats and some drinks. And we'll have Alamo Commander uh, Alamo Commander beer. And so lots of fun. And lots and lots of fun. And it sucks that you didn't get any tickets because when we all go sit together. And we all go on the field. We're going to wave at you from the stands and be like, <laughs> too bad you did not get a chance to win some tickets to join us. But I know that uh, AF101 is coming up in just a bit. Um, those guys are um, are going to talk everything and anything Alliance football. If you're a Commanders fan, if you're not a Commanders fan, uh, which I can't imagine why you wouldn't be, but if you want to talk football, tune in. Uh, they'll be uh, on for the next hour. And uh, you can actually call in. They're going to be giving away some tickets as well. Um, so if you didn't get a chance to win them through us, um, make sure you tune in and you'll be able to get tickets from them. But uh, we look forward to uh, talking to everybody next Tuesday. Um, please follow us on social media and uh, follow us on uh, www.nachosandpopcorn.com. See you next time. <laughs>